Retro Unboxing. Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan and thanks for watching. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Not wildly different like a tutorial on how to mow your lawn. Basically, a neighbour of mine knows that I'm a little bit of a geek. He knows that I know my way around computers and hard drives and consoles, etc, etc. So we were chatting the other day and he told me that his Mac Mini was buggered. Uh, I mean, basically, he said that it takes an age to load. So he's dropped it around. Here it is. And he's absolutely right. It's buggered. It's taken an age to load. Not only does it take an age to load, it then takes an age to open any anything, uh, document, photo, uh, even the the settings um, the settings menu. So I've I've had a quick uh, a quick look around it. It's an i5. It's a 2012 model, uh, and it has a massive four gigabytes of system RAM. So I will be upgrading the system RAM at some point. Uh, it's quite expensive to pick up at the minute. Uh, so I'm looking for either eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM to stick in it. But what I'm doing now is I'm gonna dismantle it. I'm gonna give it a bit of a refurb because it's a little bit mucky. And I am going to pop the SSD in. Then I'm gonna reinstall uh, Mac OS and, and get it updated to the latest uh, operating system, which I think for a 2012 uh, Mac is going to be Catalina. So, right, I'm going to crack on with it now. Okay, so if you're still watching, thanks very much. If you're not really fussed about watching this part of the video, you can feel free to skip to the end to something like 22 minutes just to see the, the results of uh, what, what has happened. But basically, uh, as I said in the introduction, this is a 2012, uh, although I've got a feeling that it was it was probably more manufactured in 13 uh, Mac Mini, so it's it's kind of eight eight nine years old now. Uh, and these these were brilliant little machines, and, and I've had quite a few of them over the years. And and if I'm honest, I think I've replaced the hard drive uh, for an SSD in pretty much all of them. You can see through this little section of the video here how slow uh, it really is. I think part of it is because it hasn't been uh, managed properly. I think if, if the owner knew a little bit more about uh, you know how to manage the software side of things a bit better, it will probably run a bit better. Uh, but ultimately it's, it's a, an eight or nine year old mechanical hard drive that frankly just needed replacing. So that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, here you can just see I'm, I'm clicking on uh, like the settings app and and it's just taken an age to load a few of these little bits are actually sped up um, but you'll you'll see and you'll you'll you should hopefully get an appreciation for for how bad this machine is uh, genuinely I'd, I'd actually spent a little bit of time deleting some stuff which actually sped it up uh, to this point where uh, well, I mean you can see look I mean it's you just constantly got the little the little rainbow ring so uh, i also you, you might have noticed there i just put my hand to, to the back of the machine which is where the the fan exhaust is uh, and I, I couldn't really feel much coming out so i thought i'd just whip the bottom off and uh, and, and just check that the fan was spinning and and it was uh, i think it's just that crapped up with dust as you can see that is pretty disgusting uh, again that will almost definitely be seven or eight years of dust coming into that machine so uh, and actually this would have been in a, a it, this was actually used in a, a tattoo studio so that was quite a, a daft it sounds actually a sterile quite a sterile environment so it could have been worse so the first thing i've done obviously i've popped the back off uh, the first thing is just get rid of the uh, the most of the dust and i've just got a little little hoover just to get as I say most of the dust out and then just running around with a, a toothbrush a pink toothbrush just to get again the bulk of the dust off it's don't don't be scared about just getting in there and and giving it a good scrub there's, there's not really a lot that you can do or hurt at this stage 
I just thought I'd give that a little wipe. The reason I've done that is because what I always, or what I've tended to do whenever I've done teardowns of these Macs is use that little tray uh, to put all my screws in. So it's quite useful. So just keep that to one side if you're going to be doing this. That's what I do. I'll leave it with you. Now, you'll notice these first three screws I take out, these actually hold the base uh, disc to the Mac. So I'm just putting them on my yellow cloth there, just in the, in the place that I've taken them out so that they go back into the same hole. These little screws have been an absolute nightmare for me over years because they're a little bit of a bugger to get back in later on, as you'll see in the video. There's, there's actually not much thread on them, so just take take care with those those three screws in particular. These next two screws actually hold the hard drive in place. So they're quite important also, so just keep those to one side. Then the next thing to do is pop the exhaust fan out. Now, I, I honestly can't remember what screwdrivers these are. I, I've got a feeling they're something like T6 and T8 or, or something like that. Little torque screwdrivers. Uh, they're very, very easy to get hold of from eBay, Amazon or, or probably some local local retailer. But I've had these I've had these for years, so I, I don't even I don't even know what they are size wise. I'll probably double check and, and I'll add the screw size into the description. So you can see this fan there is just connected to the motherboard by just a tiny little connector. So you know it's it's really easy to just pop out. You can see there's there's plenty of dust on there. Uh, again, I've I've actually seen worse, uh, lots 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 worse. So I'm just agitating the uh, the dust there, and then I'll 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 give that another another suck with the Hoover, uh, and then a uh, a blow with some compressed air, some canned air that I've got later on. What I really should have done at this point is just take this into the uh, into the shed or the garage and, and clean it out in the in the garage because this dust has gone everywhere. Uh, they actually ended up being a, a, a layer of dust across my uh, iMac screen. So you know when you start blowing that about with canned air, it just it goes everywhere. Uh, the problem is it's freezing bloody cold at the minute in the garage, so uh, I'd rather just do it in the warmth of my bedroom and then moan about it later on. So as you can see, just popping the uh, the RAM out now, there are two slots there. It's extremely easy to change RAM. You literally take take the old one out and put the new one in. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't actually have the new RAM to put into this yet. So it, I mean, it would literally just be a two minute job for me later on uh, to, to, swap, to swap that out when I've got some. And there's just this little plastic shroud there that I've just taken out. Uh, I, I don't like that, that looks like it's some sort of heat sink for something or another. Uh, but look at all the dust and crap under there. Now I'm used to being able to take off the that kind of metal grill there. That's got the uh, the airport card uh, or the the antenna. Uh, and I couldn't quite see where to just pop that off. It's, it was covered under something. I think on later models, it's actually. A little bit more obvious so unfortunately what I've just done is is left that dangling throughout this kind of project and uh, it doesn't get in the way too much to be honest as you can see there straight away the hard drive again is extremely easy to just whip out now uh, there's just a, a little connector uh, a, a micro SATA connector that just connect it to the mother motherboard you might notice although my hands in the way there's actually two of those little SATA connectors so you can quite easily put two hard drives in these machines. Uh, there you go, look, November 13, so, uh, what was that, eight years old. Um, there's the SSD that I'm putting in to replace it. It's a, a pretty basic PNY 480 gig drive. That's all, all Matt needed really for his purposes. Uh, and then I just kind of carry on cleaning and dusting and getting all those years of 
grime and crap out of there. Yeah, so as I was saying, you can quite easily put two uh, two drives in. Uh, all you have to do is get a, a an extended uh, SATA connector. Uh, again, pretty easy to pick up from from Amazon or eBay or whatever uh, to add the second hard drive. What I've done in previous uh, SSD installs of my own is to uh, then basically format the original 500 gigabyte HDD use that as the second drive and the SSD is the the main or operating system drive and then just use the 500 gigabyte drive as bulk storage it's actually quite a few years now since I, uh, I last did one of these because I've, I've sort of moved on to um, to IMAX a few years ago so it used to be that you would probably use something more like a 120 gigabyte SSD because they were you know a lot more freely available sort of five five six years ago so I'd have had either a 120 gig SSD and then a 500 gig uh, HDD or maybe a one terabyte HDD so you may have just noticed I just took a, a little bit of uh, plastic off of the HDD I had a quick look online, no one seemed to know exactly what that was for, we, we thought it was probably just some shielding for the, because the hard drive was obviously right next to the uh, to the antenna, uh, I, I've probably, I, I don't think I've ever uh, continued to use one of those and I'm not going to bother now, it's never been an issue. Now just here, uh, I'm putting the hard drive screws in, now to, to just try and explain, I will, I'll, I'm going to point in the video as well they effectively sit within the body of the Mac. There's a couple of holes, corresponding holes, just on the inside of the body of the Mac. So it's really actually quite important here when you drop the uh, drive into the SSD, as I'm doing now, that you line up those two screws with those two holes. You're not screwing anything in, they just effectively slot in and that keeps the drive in place. And then by the time you've got the SATA ribbon connector uh, plugged back in, you see it's just that little, it's a little bit awkward. That's why I've, I've just stood the Mac body up uh, and then I'm just trying to push the drive forward. So, as I say, it actually it slots into those two holes, but you'll, you'll know when it's there. You don't need to force it, you just need to kind of wiggle it around gently and, and eventually it'll go in. And then just uh, just push, I've got this little plastic spudger thing, uh, just push the uh, the SATA uh, ribbon connector back onto the drive. And then actually the, the drive's in place pretty solidly now. And then by the time you put that, uh, that cover back over, uh, there's two screw slots in there and then that just ties everything together. As you can see there, I'm just, just pointing out that the, the two the two holes on the hard drive there should correspond with that kind of mesh on the uh, on the Wi-Fi uh, antenna. Yeah, but before I can put the Wi-Fi antenna thing back on, I'm just putting that little bit of plastic cover in. Uh, it seems completely superfluous, but I'm going to put it back on anyway. I just need to put that back on before I can put the uh, Wi-Fi antenna on. Just a little tip for putting these screws back in. What I tend to do is, you'll just see, I kind of put the screw back onto the end of the screwdriver first, onto the tip the screwdriver and then just kind of pinch the screw on with my fingertip and then just guide it into the hole that way and uh, and that way you tend to get less dropped screws that are, are then going to be impossible to get back out and then they'll just be rattling around inside the Mac for uh, forever and a day so that's pretty easy and then now I can put the uh, the antenna uh, back on and this, this is a real bitch. I, I wasn't looking forward to doing this, so I'm just tucking the cable back under the uh, under the body of the, the, the case of the Mac there. And then what you have to do is kind of line up. There's the two tabs on either side. 
uh, and you have to line them up with the kind of screw holes that are drilled into the body of the Mac. And I've had this with every single one of these I've taken apart and put back together, is that you can never ever line the two holes up quite simply. They don't just slot in and sit. So what you'll see shortly is not something that I would uh, condone or uh, recommend, but because I tried on to, because it's someone else's Mac, I wanted to very much take a lot more care over it than, than I, I, I mean, I take care anyway, but um, because it was someone else's, I wanted to really sort of take, take more care than usual. So uh, what I ended up doing was simply that, just giving it a little bit of a twat with the end of the screwdriver. Uh, I think you can probably see I was, I was getting a little bit agitated with it, uh, as I say, because I've, I've done this on many occasions before. And the problem with these two screws in particular is that there's only like there's only two or three bits of thread on it and, and what I've done in the past is rip the thread off of the screw and then unfortunately what happens is the base when you put that back on later on doesn't then sit properly so it is really really important to get those couple of screws on properly so anyway uh, I, I digress now I've uh, got the fan back in place I mean that's uh, a pretty pretty simple process uh, just put the three screws back in just remember to plug the uh, the power connector back into the motherboard before you uh, before you screw the uh, fan down and then again I, I actually had a little bit of a problem with these two uh, screws in that the the screws holes on the SSD weren't quite lining up so again it's not something I'd always recommend but I've, I've only been able to actually get one of the screws in and uh, it's it's plenty. It keeps the SSD in place, uh, but again, I just wouldn't recommend it. So I ended up sort of skipping one of the screws and, and not actually using it. I, I, but I, I really hate that. It's sat next to me now, and it's just glaring at me. And I know that it isn't in the Mac. Uh, I'm fairly sure you'll probably understand my quandary there. So just give the uh, all the ports a bit of a clean out, bit of a bit of a blow, and a bit of a dust, and a bit of a suck. And then this polish, I, I use this particular polish. It, uh, I, I've been using it on these products for ages. Some some polishes and some cleaning fluids can end up, uh, you know, knackering the plastic or the metal. Uh, and this particular polish I use, I've, I've been using it for years, and I know that it doesn't knacker anything. Uh, if I was doing a deeper clean, what I would have probably done would have been to take the full motherboard out, and uh, and as I say, really kind of get into everything. Uh, and get every every last drop of dust, but this was just as I say. I mean, the fact is, it's an eight eight year old machine, and and everything that I've done here is is massively of benefit to it, and and should keep it going for another another five another eight years, you know. So maybe next time. So yeah, there was just this little plastic circle just stuck onto the uh, onto the body of the Mac. So I've just got that off. Just give that a bit of a clean up. As I say, this this polish uh, I know isn't going to um, isn't going to affect the uh, the metal in any way, shape, or form. And to be honest, by the time I've done, you, you have a glance at that machine, and it actually looks it looks like new. It's it's come up. I'm, I'm actually really really pleased with the uh, with the result. So you can see, I'm just scratching and scraping all of the rest of that crap off. Just give everything else a little bit of a wipe. Just one last wipe of the uh, of the base cover there, and then just get that back on. Yeah, just showing you there. There, the two the two screws are meant, so they just all line up, and uh, yeah, as you can see, just twist. So the, those screws are quite important. Just give the mouse and keyboard a bit of a clean as well while I'm at it. All part of the service. Right, now we're going to get the uh, operating system reinstalled. So all I've done is put a blank SSD in the machine. And the good thing with Macs is that the uh, operating system is really, really easy to reinstall. So once you've installed the drive, you turn the Mac on and you press the Command and R key uh, to put it back into or put it into this recovery mode. 
Uh, and that uh, takes a few moments to load up, but then you've got this little couple of little bits of software that you can use to reinstall uh, the operating system. So the first thing you need to do is format the drive. Now, later Macs, you'll be using the uh, APFS file format, uh, but with this one, it's just the old the old Mac OS, uh, and just use the journaled uh, file format system. Format the drive, that takes a few moments. And then when that's done, go back to reinstall OS X. Now, I, I'm obviously, apologies for the uh, the camera focus there. Uh, obviously, we, we, so with this being a 2012 machine, it would have originally shipped with either Mountain Lion or potentially Mavericks. I haven't actually checked through the, uh, through the dates. Uh, so unfortunately what happens is you have to reinstall effectively when you do it this way the original operating system that came on the Mac and then you have to then upgrade to to the latest operating system but it is literally just a matter of time it isn't a difficult thing to do um, so if you if you just follow these steps it's it's pretty easy what you'll see here is that once it had started doing the update or the upload uh, or sorry the download for uh, OS X Mavericks is that it was going to take something like 16 uh, 18 hours or something ridiculous so I left the room I came back 10 minutes later and it still said that it was going to take what does it say um, 18 hours so the the Wi-Fi uh, up in the up in the bedroom isn't great so uh, I used to have like a, a 20 foot long uh, Ethernet cable that I'd sort of dangle up the stairs and I can't find it for the life of me so as you see here I took the Mac downstairs luckily I'd still left in my HDMI cable and uh, Ethernet and power for my Xbox One X and, and it's all the same plug so uh, I just plugged it into the main TV here so once I got Mavericks downloaded then all you have to do is search the App Store for the uh, Catalina which is the latest software I can put on uh, a 2012 Mac and then that's it just follow through all the updates just do everything that these, it, it asks you to do and then that's it job done look at that it's like new just a bit of elbow grease and a bit of time and uh, I'm really pleased with it right hello quick summary so I've changed the hard drive I've reinstalled uh, Mac OS X. I had to do it twice, uh, so because it was original. Well, I think originally it was probably uh, Mountain Lion or something like that. But uh, the latest that it seems to default back to uh, seems to be Maverick. So I had to install Mavericks uh, via the network recovery. You'll have seen in the video. I tried to do it up here via Wi-Fi. I had to take it downstairs so I could plug it into the router. Um, uh, that took about 35 40 minutes to install Mavericks, and then I found the latest copy of Catalina, which is now done. That took another sort of 45 minutes, so it took me probably two and a half hours in total from taking the back cover off to now being complete. So, just watch how quickly this now boots up. And this is a nine year old Mac, it's a, a basic i5 with four gigabytes of RAM configuration, and it's still pretty wicked. I mean, you, you'll see it start to uh, boot up behind me, and from from me pressing the button to being at the desktop, I'm uh, I'm just talking a little bit long, trying to trying to take this really slowly so that it uh, it's there, it's done, right, great, sweet. So what, probably ten, somewhere between ten and fifteen seconds to um, to boot, and then it's really snappy. Everything just works exactly as it should. And I've probably said it earlier on in the video, it's probably actually better than it was originally with the uh, the SSD now. So you can see Mac SSD, 480 gig solid state drive. Memory is still at the, the paltry four gigabytes. It's enough to get uh, my neighbor by for now, just to um, get things running, but I'm gonna stick in either eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM in as soon as I can pick some up for him. Right, so if you've got any questions about this sort of um, this sort of install, 
it's, it is it is really easy. I'm sure you'll be able to do it yourself, but if you've got any questions or you need any help, please just leave a comment. If you've enjoyed my video, give us a like and subscribe. Next week, I'll be back into the retro gaming arena. I still think this is kind of retro, isn't it? You know, 2012 for a, for a computer uh, that you can still use in 2021. But anyway, I'll be back to retro gaming next week. So give us a like, give us a subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you soon.